SpaceX announced that they're going to be building a Giga Bay to make Starships down here. And, you know, I mean, do you, do you know much about Starship? Not really, no. Okay. No, I'm sure when it's bigger and louder, my kids will get excited again for a short time and then they'll get annoyed again. Yeah. <laughs> the Giga Bay in Florida will stand 380 feet tall and provide approximately 46.5 million cubic feet of interior processing space with 815,000 square feet of workspace. This includes ground level, elevated platform work areas, and a work meeting space on the top floor. Giga Bay will be able to support Starship and Super Heavy vehicles up to 81 meters or 266 feet tall and will provide 24 work cells for integration and refurbishment work. This along with cranes capable of lifting up to 400 U.S. tons. Compared to the Mega Bay facilities in Starbase, currently SpaceX's largest stacking and integration buildings, Giga Bay provides more than 11 times the square footage for workspace, 19 additional work cells, and more than twice the crane lifting capacity. So SpaceX announced that site preparations for Giga Bay in Florida have already begun, with construction targeted to be completed at the facility and operational by the end of 2026. At the same time, SpaceX is also building another Giga Bay at Starbase in Texas next to our Starship Star Factory manufacturing facility. And work on that Giga Bay has already begun and the facility is targeted for completion also by the end of 2026. So SpaceX shares more about the vision for Florida. Quote, as we work to complete the Giga Bay in Florida, we are also designing and planning for a co-located manufacturing facility similar to the Star Factory in Texas to enable production of Starships in Florida. To enable initial Starship flights from Florida while our Space Coast Starship manufacturing, integration, and refurbishment facilities are being completed, we will first transport completed Super Heavy boosters and Starship upper stage ships from Starbase via barge to build up a Starship fleet in Florida. With production, integration, refurbishment, and launch facilities in Florida as well as Texas, we will be in a position to quickly ramp Starship's launch rate via rapid reusability. So SpaceX's goal, which might be a little unrealistic, but we'll see, is to launch a Starship later this year from LC-39A. But this Giga Bay that is in the works is the only planned vertical integration facility at the Cape for Starship. I decided to ask residents what they think about Starship, a much louder rocket uh, than Falcon 9 coming to the Space Coast. And you're a local, how long have you lived here? Oh, 40 years. Okay, so you know what you're talking about. All right. So, um, first of all, like, with all the rocket launches, you know, there's Starlinks launching all the time. Does the noise or the launches, do they bother you? Not at all. I'm just proud that he's doing it, and every time it goes up, I tell him, oh, there he goes, showing off again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they are the best in the biz. I don't know, do you know much about the new Starship development coming here to the Space Coast? I heard about it about a week ago after the other one blew up in Texas. Yeah. So basically, a sonic boom from Starship, and I've seen many in person, is incredibly loud and way louder than probably what you're used to. Right. Does that concern you? Would that bother you as a local? No, uh, we'd be happy to see it here. It's awesome. You know, as we watched the shuttle come in, I watched all the shuttle program. I watched the Challenger blow up when I first moved down here, which was a, quite a re disappointment, but you know, it's space exploration yeah. and it's a risky business. And uh, when they take off, they take off in that direction right there, you know, right underneath of it when it goes up. Wow. And uh, God, I'm mean, so impressed to watch them return. and. I get the binoculars out and watch it come down. Yep. And you see the burn straight up just about yeah, in the atmosphere. Crazy. And when it comes down, it's crazy. So I guess I'd ask you this. Are you excited that Starship is going to come to Florida? Yes. Uh, it's going to bring more business. Uh, and so do you know, like, what the general consensus is for people that live around here? I mean, they must, if, you, if you're going to live on the Space Coast, you're probably okay with the rockets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You should be. Well, the Saturn, I missed that, you know, the Apollo missions, and they said, you know, they launch over here, and 
those things would just rattle everybody. You know, there was nothing, nothing like it, and there still isn't nothing like yeah. on a Saturn V going up. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, well, Starship's going to be a good competitor. Thirty-one engines. Yeah, I'm telling you. Well, thirty-three. Well, I, well, yeah. If they all go I, off. I, my math ain't very well. <laughs> <laughs> so. there, I'm telling you, uh, the sonic boom from a Starship catch is very loud it's gotta be awesome yeah it's gonna be yeah. awesome and, and of course the nine's coming back have you noticed that spacex has like changed the economy around here i mean obviously the space coast you know has long before uh, spacex has spacex changed anything i couldn't tell you right off the bat but yet the tr by looking at the traffic here on this four the four lane yeah there's a lot more people at work and the traffic's getting back to where it was back in the shuttle days. So that's maybe a downside. Well, that's progress. Um, SpaceX is launching, you know, every three days. Uh, how has that been for you? Um, it, it seems like it's a bit much. I feel like the uh, rocket launches are definitely causing cracks in our drywall. We live very close. Uh, we're right up here on Hall Road, so, um, you know, the drywall cracks are getting worse and worse. and. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it has to have something to do with that. It, it's, it's getting worse the more frequently they launch them. Right. So. so, so, like, moving to the Space Coast, I'm sure you expected some of that. Like, did you move here because you're a space fan or, like, for work or? Uh, for work and for family. My wife's family lives here, so we're just getting close. But, yeah, I, I have work here, too. So how do you feel about <laughs> SpaceX is going to be bringing Starship, which is much louder, those sonic booms, I've seen seven Starship launches in person. The catch when they bring that booster back to the tower is incredibly loud. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I don't like the idea of it being more frequent and louder. However, I also got to consider the fact that I knew it was there when I moved here and you know, it was here first. I kind of knew what I was getting into. I guess I just didn't realize it was going to be quite as intense. Yeah. No, I mean, we appreciate like the honest opinion because we're not locals. And so I think it's, it's really cool to visit, but it is kind of like, what is it like to live with it constantly going all the time? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say within the first year or so, uh, we would wake up for every single one of them anymore. We do kind of sleep through them now, but, uh, but it is a lot wake up because it woke you up or because you wanted to watch it oh because it woke us up we were watching it for probably the first six weeks and then we got real tired of it after that <laughs> sure. um, yeah i've got two kids i've got okay, a six a six-year-old and a ten-year-old uh they started sleeping through it before we did um but you know they don't seem to mind it do they like it um they are indifferent now uh it wow. took it took about six months before they stopped caring about it yeah yeah SpaceX announced that they're going to be building a gigabay to make Starships down here. And, you know, I mean, do you, do you know much about Starship? Not really, no. Okay. No, I'm sure when it's bigger and louder, my kids will get excited again yeah. for a short time and then they'll get annoyed again. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, have you noticed, you know, do, do you feel like SpaceX is kind of has a big influence here? Like as a local, do you notice its presence? Um, other than the rockets? Yeah, no, I've only been here for a couple of years, but I can tell you within that couple of years that we've lived here, I've seen a tremendous increase in traffic going up and down Hall Road, and um, certain times of the day it's it's terrible. And uh, it has to, it's all coming from up there, so I'm not sure how many jobs they've got going on up there, but I, I'm, glad, I'm glad there's a lot of people employed, but mm -hmm. the traffic is pretty rough. And by the way, speaking of Starship, let's talk about Starship in Texas. Shanna, who works for the Starship program in Texas, shared it's definitely been a rough start of the year for Starship. Really causes me to reflect on how many tens of thousands or more things have to go right in a rocket launch to result in success and how even one thing being slightly out of place or out of order results in total failure. And when you start to include economics into the mix, the thing can't cost infinite dollars or take a huge amount of time to make or it's just impractical, the overall problem can feel quite daunting. Time to remind myself that anything worth doing should feel difficult as otherwise you aren't really pushing yourself to be better and maybe take a few hours to reread the stars, my destination for added motivation. So I really wonder what the Starship team in Texas is going to do moving forward. As you know, they've suffered two RUDs, or rapid unscheduled disassemblies, explosions, if you will, on flight seven and eight. Now, luckily, they weren't explosions on the pad, but we don't want to lose the ships. So they're trying to resolve those underlying issues with the fuel lines and pipe design in the V2 Starships. 
but this will require a full and detailed design review and maybe even significant hardware changes that might not easily be incorporated into the existing ships, ship 35, 36, 37, and 38. And with Elon's very ambitious timeline of trying to send the first starships to Mars next year, I'm sure there is so much added pressure. And once we solve this problem currently with Starship, they still need further development, testing, and deployment of necessary logistical and supporting capabilities like those refilling depots and tanker Starship variants, also the lander Starship design for HLS. So what do you guys think in the comments? Do you think that we should still shoot for Mars in 2026, or do you think that the team should let go of that goal and focus on the next orbital transit opportunity in 2029 to take some of that pressure off of themselves and let them really focus? And by the way, keep in mind that SpaceX recently posted a job listing for a fuel line expert. So they really need help solving this problem. It's really a question of, will they be able to solve the design issue without having to scrap the existing ships? And when will they be able to fly again? It's such a bummer that they haven't even been able to test those heat shield designs and experiments. And hopefully they are able to do that successfully on the next flight, Flight 9. But we're not exactly sure when that will be. And so that is some of the latest Starship development news. If you liked it, please subscribe to Alien Space. It's free. And thanks so much for watching my content. I'll see you in the next video.